go. Hi there, I'm Chris Saxon, uh, one of the Oracle de de developer advocates, part of Stephen Feuerstein's team to help you get the best out of your Oracle database and make your life better through SQL. Today, we're going to look at how you can capture history using Flashback Data Archive. So let's get started. First up, let's set some context. Why, why do we want to capture history? What's this all? About? Well, you want to, there are many, the two key reasons you want to do this. Um, one is for audit purposes. So auditors come in, they typically want to see changes to all the information um, in your database over a period of time so they can investigate and see if there's any incidents of fraud or anything else going suspicious going on. Another common reason is to support reporting and business intelligence. The business want to know um, what's happened in time. Say the sales and marketing teams are experimenting with different prices for products. If you keep the full version history of all the prices, then you can see if a particular product didn't sell at a price. So if they're raising and raising the prices, and at some point it reaches a uh, ceiling where no one is prepared to pay that, if you keep the history, you can see at this time the price was X and no one purchased it. If you don't have the history, all you know is people didn't buy at that time. And you've got to rely on people's memories to figure out what actually happened. So there's a couple of key reasons, support audit and regulation, and also to support business intelligence and reporting. So with that in mind, I'm gonna tell a little story. Recently, I moved house, um, and I moved out in a bit of a hurry, and so I forgot to tell all my utility companies that I was moving. So at some point after I moved, I phoned them up and I said, I'm moving now, can you close down my account and send me a final bill? So for example, I phoned up my water company um, in September, phoned them, told them I've moved out, please close my account and send me my final bill. However, I hadn't moved in September, I'd actually moved all the way back in June. I've been a bit lazy here. Um, so, but they recorded my moving out date as the 1st of September. They close my account down, issue me with my final invoice. I get it, and unsurprisingly, I'm a bit frustrated. They've charged me for three months I've not actually used the account for. Um, so I phone them up, a bit annoyed, and it's like, there's three extra months of usage here. You know, what's going on? And they go, sorry, sorry, Mr. Saxon. We apologize, we'll fix it, so they, cancel my invoice, update the record to be the 1st of June, and um, reissue me with a new invoice. And as far as I'm concerned, the story's now finished. However, if we fast forward a few months at the water company, the auditors are looking back over the invoices they've issued over the past year, and they happen to pick out the first, the original final invoice they issued to me, which said, that I lived there at uh, the Shire on the 1st of September. And then they cross-reference that with my customer records. So they look at this and they see that the invoice says um, up to the 1st of September. However, the customer records say I lived there on the 1st of June. And they're going, well, what's going on here? How can we explain this? Why is there this difference? Um, now, hopefully, they can reconstruct this information through things like uh, customer call records and so on. Unfortunately, the company's gone through a bit of a restructure. They've changed um, customer call providers, and they don't have easy access to this. So there's a number of invoices where this situation has arisen. Um, and the auditors are, say, are not happy with this. And there's potential that the company could get some severe fines as a result of this. So this escalates very quickly, goes up to the board, very senior people get involved, very high priority that um, we, the company starts recording information about history of changes to customer addresses and other custom, customer information. Um, so this is really high priority. It comes down the management chain, eventually gets to your boss, 
your boss comes to you and says, we need a, a history tracking for this database. We need to record all changes to tables in the database so we can reconstruct the history. This is really, really high priority, very urgent. You've got one week, go. Um, at this point, you have a kind of a mild panic attack. You're kind of considering your options and thinking this is going to be a lot of work. Um, am I going to have to cancel my weekend or work a huge amount of overtime to do this? Because tra traditionally, there's a couple of ways you could do that. And let's look at those now. So first up, if you're capturing history um, for a table, so we've got our customer addresses table here, one way you can do that is capturing it in place. So you, all the history is in the same table. And the way you can do that is you can add some additional columns to the table, um, so these start and end dates, to say when that row in the database was actually active, and probably some additional metadata to say who modified it um, and other stuff which may be required by audit. So for example, um, with my invoice information here, I they recorded on the 2nd of October that I moved out on the 1st of September, um, which is the wrong information. However, this means that now instead of updating this row, we insert a new row and mark the end this row as having ended. So the implication here is we never actually issue any updates other than to these end dates and we never delete rows out of the database. And so in this say, case, when I phone them up and correct their mistake, they create a new row with the correct moved out date and end date the old one. And this is potentially going to be a lot of work, particularly if you're going to have to build this into a lot of tables in your database. Um, you can see you're going to have to recode any updates and deletes probably going to have to rewrite most, if not all, the queries against the table to capture the information. And doing this in the week you got, it's, this is going to be a non-starter. So another approach you could take is, rather than capturing it in place, is to have a separate table, a history table. And what happens here, whenever you write changes to the customer addresses table, you have a customer addresses history table, which, and those changes are also copied there. And you can use this to get a full version history of what's going on. So you've got the transaction date time when it happens, transaction type, you know, insert, update, delete, and other kind of audit metadata, who did it, and so on. Now, this is more feasible, simpler to in implement, but there's still a lot of work involved. Um, you've got to update your application code to support this or create some triggers to do it. And uh, You've also got some ongoing maintenance for this uh, table. So anyone who wants to add or remove change columns in the customer addresses table also needs to put those changes into the addresses history table to ensure they stay in sync. And unless you've got good development processes and documentation, this is the kind of thing that gets easily overlooked, uh, particularly if you move on to a different role. So you've implemented this nice history tracking system. Someone else comes along who doesn't know about it and adds some columns to the addresses table and forgets to add them to the address history table. Because this information is often only used for audit and things like that, this isn't noticed till several months or even several years later, by which time, it's too late, the information's gone. So this inf adding, creating a history table is quicker than doing in place and less impact on your overall application, but it does add ongoing maintenance overhead. And particularly if you imagine, they say two, 300 tables in your database, a week's still not really enough time to code all code it all up, create the tables, test it, make sure it all works. Um, so at this point you're thinking, uh, do I need to get a caffeine drip to, so I can stay awake for the 168 hours so I can get it done and in production? Fortunately, you're using, um, so this is all sounding pretty hard. 
Fortunately, you're using an Oracle database and you can use Flashback Data Archive to do this all for you. So this can capture the history for you automatically and all you need to do to enable it is run a couple of SQL commands. So at this point, I'm gonna jump into SQL Developer and show you what's going on. So first up, um, Flashback Data Archive builds on basic uh, flashback query technology. So if we've got our customer addresses table and we can see we've got our incorrect row saying the 1st of September. I'll update it now so it says the 1st of June. And standard flashback query uses undo information to reconstruct how the row looked in the past. So, and you do that just using this as of timestamp clause. And you pick a time, so current time minus five minutes. So how did it look five minutes ago? I just pin that. We run this, we can see it says the 1st of September now, and it's the 1st of June now. Um, and it was the 1st of September five minutes ago. So this is using the undo information to reconstruct the past, look back at how it worked. And you, you might be thinking, okay, well, why can't we just use this to do our data auditing and tracking the history? Well, like I say, because this uses undo, there's a few problems with that. First one is um, the storage space required. The amount will depend on the rate of change of data in your database, but if you've got a lot of DML happening, a lot of modifications, then the undo space required to store that will grow and keep growing and growing. Um, and you'll quick, quite quickly get to the point where your undo table space is significantly larger than the database itself. Um, so there's only a limited time window you can store. There's some other problems with this as well. Shut down and restart the database, that undo information is gone. And equally, you run DDL against the table, so we add some columns to customer addresses. You can't do the flashback query to, type, to get the data before you ran it. So basic flashback, it's, it's nice if you want to do something like um, investigate a production problem shortly after it's happened or you're doing some testing and you want to compare before and after versions of tables to ver verify your changes did what they were supposed to. But as an audit mechanism, it's very limited and um, doesn't work. So I'll just roll that back. So at this point, um, we can bring, bring in Flashback Data Archive. And this builds on Flashback Query. And to use it, there's just two things we need to do. We create an archive, so you create the archive, give it a name, where it lives, and specify a retention period. So this is how long Oracle guarantees we will keep the history of your changes for. So I've said one, one year here, so any changes I make to customer addresses today, we'll be able to get a version history of that for at least a year. So on the 21st of October 2016, I'll still be able to view changes I make now. I may be able to view them a bit longer than that. Um, depends on how space management works out, but that's how long we guarantee it for. And then to enable it for a table, all we need to do is issue this alter table statement. We just say which flashback archive it's using. And then all the changes are then stored in this archive for you, which is really handy. Now, I've actually already set it up on this addresses table. Um, I ran some statements earlier to help you see the effect a bit better. Um, so I'm not gonna run them now, but if we run the example again, so we've got the customer addresses as it exists now, first of September, we set it to the, the first of June again, and there we go. So it's still using the basic flashback query, see how it looked five minutes ago. But because I used, I'd set it up in the flashback archive, we can actually go back much further than that. So even five days ago, how it looked back then, and it says the 1st of September. So this is really good. Um, if we go back to the audit story we looked at originally, the auditors have pulled up this invoice that was issued 
some point in September. Um, and it says I moved out on the 1st. However, they're looking at the row now and it says um, I moved out in June and they're going, well, what's going on? We can just issue a query. We can have some facility in an admin app perhaps, which says um, view the data as it existed on this day in this past. So they just need to pass in the date time of the invoice and they can check that and see that the data actually matches up, which is really good. So they're already starting to feel nice, the auditors, but um, they tend to want to go further, okay? They can say, okay, we can see how the data existed at this time in the past, but um, we want to know who's changed it, how's it changed, when did it change, all these kind of questions. So the as of timestamp clause enables us to view the data at a point in time in the past. But another thing we want to see is the changes over time, what actually changed and when. And we can do this using versions between syntax. So we've got as of timestamp, you can do versions between timestamp and you just specify a, spot, a start time, so five minutes ago in the current time. And this will show us uh, or everything that's changed in the table in this time. And you can see that there's also these pseudo columns or, that Oracle provides to show when the rows were active, so the start and end times, the SENs, so the database, SEN times, the uh, transaction ID, unique transaction that ID that's applied, and the operation, so it was an insert, an update or delete. And using this, we can actually see all the changes that's happened to the table. We can see everything that was inserted, updated, and deleted, which is um, really handy to do. And we can actually do that and look back. As I was saying, I've, earlier today, I stuffed in a whole bunch of changes. You can see these are all the rows that I inserted. So we just sort it by start time. There we go. Um, so I've put, inserted a whole bunch of rows here at this time then went through and deleted a bunch of them and updated and so on. So this is really useful. We can got a full version history of what's happened. And all we needed to do was you know, run two SQL commands, which, you know, our time now can just be focused on testing, double checking, um, the, there's not any unsurprising issues, um, validating how much extra storage we're gonna need to capture all this audit and so on. So this is, this is pretty nice. Um, now, another thing that auditors, particularly when it comes to financial transactions, like to see is, you know, all the information, you know, what IP address did these changes come from? What was the OS user? What was their machine name and so on? Um, so if they are having to investigate fraud or something like that, they can really pinpoint exactly what happened. And fortunately, um, in 12C, Flashback Data Archive allows you to do that by, and you can do that using this set context level. So there's three levels, none, uh, typical, and all. And if you set it to all, it captures basically all the information out of your sys contexts. So a lot of information out of V dollar session about what people have done, uh, who they are, what they're doing, and so on. So I'll just do that now. So we execute this statement and run the update again. And I shall commit that. Um, now you can then get a whole bunch of information. So what my IP address was, what my host was, various other details. Um, you can look in the docs for what these user env parameters are. This is just to give you a sample. And if we run this, you can see we got all this lovely, nice information that auditors like to see, you know, what my IP address, what my host was, who, who I am, all this kind of information. And it, all we needed to do was set it to all. Now note, you know, this is gonna increase the storage requirements quite significantly. So you do need to make sure you're working with your DBAs and your sysadmins to ensure you've got sufficient storage to do this, but it's possible. And all it requires is you to execute this package, which is kind of nice. Um, so let me just set that back to none. So you can see this is this is really easy. Just by running a few SQL commands, we're automatically capturing all the history of changes to our tables um, and see 
what's going on. So just to recap, so that was flashback da data archive. You know, instead of, if we go back to the story where your boss has got told you, you got one week to implement full version history um, of all the tables in the database, rather than having a mild panic attack, you can go, absolutely, I'll get it done for you. Do you want it uh, the day after tomorrow or on Monday? And you can just focus your time on doing the testing, making sure it works, and working with the DBAs to ensure you've got su sufficient storage and so on. Once you've done this, you can get data as existed in the table and point in the time in the past using this as of syntax. You should also get all the changes between um, two times using the version between syntax. So this is really easy to do, nice and simple. Um, now, finally, just one thing to be aware of, this was a separately licensable option in the past. However, that's changed in 11.204 and higher. So as long as you're on 11.204 or 12C, this is all completely free to use in Enterprise Edition and you've got it ready to go. In versions before that, this is a separately licensable option, so do be aware of that. Um, and this may be a good reason to upgrade. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to hang around for a little while now, but thanks for joining us, and that was Flashback Data Archive.